Lesson 9.2, multiply and dividing rational expressions. How can you multiply and divide rational expressions? First, you want to factor. First, factor each numerator and denominator. Factor each numerator and denominator. And really, if you can simplify it, go ahead and do it there. Then you're going to multiply the numerators and denominators. And then third, simplify the results. Simplify the results. Now, this may seem a little vague to you right now, but after we do it a, little, a couple of times, you'll see what I'm talking about. Relating multiplication concepts. Use the facts you know about multiplying rational numbers to determine how to multiply rational expressions. How do you multiply 4 fifths times 5 sixths? You multiply the 4 by the 5 to find the numerator. That's not looking too good. Numerator. Of the product, then multiply 5 by 6 to find the denominator. So 4 times 5 gives you 20, 5 times 6 gives you 30. To simplify, back to the denominator. The numerator and denominator, that's going to be 4 times 5, which is 2 times 2 times 5. And the bottom is going to be 2 times 15, which is 3 times 5. So what can we take out of that? Let's see here. Cancel the common factors. We can cancel out uh, some 2s here. Cancel those 2s out. And we can cancel out some 5s. And we're left with... Two thirds. Now let's go back up here and look at this. You got four fifths times five six. Well, let's look at that. We can cancel these fives out. Those both become one. And then you end up with four times one, which is four, and one times six, which is six. And that reduces to two thirds. Same thing. Two thirds here. Two thirds there, okay. So you're going to have to simplify. A lot of times it's sim it's easier to simplify at the beginning. Based on the steps used for multiplying rational numbers, how can you multiply the rational expression x plus one over x minus one times three over two times x minus one? Well, uh, let's see. Let's multiply. The numerator, which would be x plus 1 by 3, and that's going to give you, that'll equal 3 times x plus 1. Okay. Next, multiply the denominator. Multiply the denominator, and that's going to be x minus 1 times uh, by 2 times x plus 1. And that's going to give you 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then you would simplify. And then you would simplify. Discussion. Multiplying rational expressions is similar to multiplying rational numbers. Likewise, dividing rational expressions is similar to dividing rational numbers. How could you use the steps for dividing rational numbers to divide rational 
expressions. So what, how do we usually do? How do we usually do that? Uh, when it's kind of complicated, we always multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, and when you're trying to divide rational expressions, you're going to want to multiply by the reciprocal. Multiplying rational expressions. To multiply rational expressions, multiply the numerators to find the numerator of the product and multiply the denominators to find the denominator. Then simplify the product by canceling common factors. Note the excluded values of the product which are any values of the variable for which the expression is undefined. So there's A. I'll let you look through A, and when you get back, we'll do uh, B together. So we have, we have x squared minus 8x divided by 14 times x squared plus 8x plus 15 times 7x plus 35 over x plus 8. So... Let's see, what do we got here? We have x squared minus 8, so we can factor out an x right there. Down here, you have x 14 times x squared plus 8x plus 15. Well, that's going to be x plus 3 times x plus 5. Up here, we take out the 7, and we have x plus 5, and then x plus 8 in the bottom. All right, good deal. So we're going to have 7 times x, 7x, and then x minus 8 times x plus 5. And then 14 times x minus th or x plus 3 times x plus 5 times x plus, plus 8. Now, that's just multiplying them all the way across. Now, it says cancel the common factors. So let's, what do we have here for common factors? We got an x plus 5 and an x plus 5. Good, good, good. And let's see. The 7, that becomes 1. That 14 becomes a 2. And what do we have left, left up there? We have x times x minus 8. And then on the bottom, we have x plus 3 times x plus 8. Determine what values of x make each expression undefined. The denominator is 0 when, when uh, and then x, well, what do we have? x plus 3 and x. So the denominator is 0 when x equals negative 3 and when x equals negative 5. The denominator is 0 when... x equals negative 8. Okay. Excluded values. So the excluded values is going to be x equals negative 3, x equals negative 5, and uh, and x equals negative 8. Okay, and let's see, that one there. Here's what we got. We got this one from here. We got this one from there. And we got this one from here. So we had to do all the denominators. Your turn. Find the products and any excluded values. Find the products and any excluded values. So what do we need to do first? Well, we need to factor, uh, let's see, let's factor this numerator. x squared plus 9, that's a difference of perfect squares, so that's going to be, and I'm going to write x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then let's do this one here. x squared minus 5. 
8 and 3, so that's going to be x minus 8 times x plus 3. Good. And that's going to be times, we got x minus 8 up here. And down here, we can take a 2x out, and we have x minus 9. x minus 9. Okay. Uh, let's see. what I'm going to go ahead and have x plus 3 there and x plus 3 there. I have a... Uh, x minus 8 here and an x minus 8 there and I'm left with I'm in the numerator here I got x minus 3 in the denominator here I've got 2x times x minus 9 okay x minus 3 times 2x or divided by 2x times x minus 9 my excluded values my excluded values will be uh, x equals 8, or x cannot equal 8, uh, and then x cannot equal negative 3, <coughs> x, and then you got 2x, so x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal 9. So that's where I got all of those from. Let's look at this in here. We got x divided by x minus 9. x divided by x minus 9 times, and then we can take a 3 out of that, and that gives you x minus 9 over x plus 1. Uh, what can I get rid of? What can I factor out? I can factor out of x minus 9 in both of them. And there's nothing left to factor. So I have x times 3, that gives me 3x. And then 1 times x plus 1, that gives me x plus 1. All right. Now, what are my excluded factors? x cannot equal 9. x cannot equal negative 1. That wasn't too bad. Dividing rational exponents, or rational expressions. So go ahead and, and read through that. When you come back, we'll do B together. We'll do B together. Glad you're back. You have 6x divided by 3x minus 30, divided by 9x squared minus 27x minus 36 over x squared minus 10. So let's look up here. I guess, well, first off, they're going to multiply, so they're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So they're going to put the denominator here up in the top. So you got x squared minus 10x. And they're going to put the numerator up here down in the bottom. 9x squared, 9x squared minus 27x minus 36. Now, what can they factor out of this, this numerator? They can't factor anything out of 6, but this, they can factor an x out, and they're left with x minus 10. Now, down here, they can factor a 3 out, and they're left with x minus 10. Okay, good. They can factor a 9 out, and let's see this. If they factor a 9 out, they have x squared. 27 divided by 9 is 3, minus 3x, and 36 divided by 9 is minus 4. Okay, so we got 9, and then what can we factor out of that? Well, uh, we have x minus 4 times x plus 1. 4 times 1 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Okay, so that works. But they got x plus 1. So we got x minus 4. Okay. Multiply the numerators. In. So we're going to go to 6x times x is 6x squared. And then you got x minus 10. Down here, 3 times 9 is 27. And then they got x minus 10. 
and then x plus 1, and then x minus 4. Okay, they like to kind of put them together first. Now it says cancel the common factor. So what's common? What's common? You got an x minus 10 here and an x minus 10 there. Good. Uh, what do you, well, let's see. What goes, uh, 3 goes into 6 two times. 3 goes into 27 three times. Anything else we can factor out? Uh, 3 goes into 9 times. So you have 2x squared up top. And the bottom you've got 9 times uh, x plus 1 times x minus 4. 9 times x plus 1 times x minus 4. Good. Now we need to determine the excluded values. Uh, determine what values of x make each expression undivided. So uh, 3x minus 30. So that's going to, the denominator is 0, 1, when x equals 10. Here you got x, and that would be, uh, that would be x times x minus 10. So you got 2 there when x equals 0 and when x equals 10. Down here at the bottom, we take the 9 out. And then remember what we factored it. We factored it as uh, x, uh, x plus 1 and x minus 4. x plus 1 and then x plus 4. And then multiply that by 10. So the denominator is 0 when x equals negative 1 and when x equals 4. So our excluded values, well, you got x equals 0, you got x equals 10, you got x equals negative 1, and you got x equals 4. Hmm. Find the quotients and any excluded values. This looks like fun. And let's see here. Uh, first, I'm going to rewrite it. I got x plus 11 over 4x times uh, x squared plus 2x minus 3 over 2x plus 6. All right, so what do we got here? x plus 11 over 4x times, we got, what do we got here? We've got x plus 3 times x minus 1. And then we've got 2 times x plus 3. All right, good. Now we got it all factored. What can we what can we take out? We got an x plus three and an x plus three there. Anything else? Nothing else I see. So now let's multiply across. You got x plus eleven times x minus one, and and you got four x times two. That gives you eight x. All right, good, good. Now what are the excluded values? So x cannot equal, and then let's go uh, 0, x cannot equal, and then that would be negative 3. Uh, what else can I see, x squared? What else? Is there anything else that's missing? You got four, you got zero, two, and x minus three. One, that's twelve, that's three times, and then that would make that a zero. Zero. That would, so, and x cannot equal one. X cannot equal one. And I'm just seeing that from right there. Okay, negative 11. Negative 11, that would make that. Uh, x cannot equal 1. Hmm. 
Number five. We're just checking the denominators. All right, number five. We need to first rewrite it. You've got 20 over x squared minus 7x times x squared minus 15x plus 56 all over 5x squared minus 40x. All right, let's factor out, factor what we can here. 20, there's nothing to factor out of there. You got x times x minus seven. Go up here sometimes. And then that's gonna be x minus eight, x minus eight times x minus seven. The one came from here. Remember this numerator? That's where we got that one. That's good. We gave us that. All right. And then you got 5x, 5x, and then you got x minus 8. Okay. Now, what can, what can we factor out? We can factor out the x minus 7, the x minus 7. We can factor out the x minus 8 and the x minus 8. Look at here. 5 goes into 24 times. So what do we have left? What do we have left? We have 4 times 1, so that's 4 over x times x is x squared. What are our excluded values? Well, we have an x and an x minus 7, so x cannot equal 0. x cannot equal 7. Up here, we have 8 x minus 8 and x minus 7. So x cannot equal 8. x cannot equal 8. Anything else? Uh, no, that looks like it. All right, good job. Activity, investigating closure. A set of numbers is said to be closed or to have closure under a given operation if the result of the operation on any two numbers in the set is also in the set. So whole numbers. Whole numbers are closed under addition and they're closed under multiplication. Uh, they are not closed, not under subtraction and division. Okay. Integers are closed under addition. They are closed under subtraction. They are closed under uh, multiplication. And they are not an on division. Okay. Rational numbers are closed under addition. They are closed under subtraction. They are closed under multiplication, and they are closed under division. Look at the set of rational expressions. Use the rational expressions p of x divided by q of x and r of x divided by s of x, where p of x, q of x, r of x, and s of x are non-zero. Add, uh, add the rational expressions. So let's see here, add the rational expressions. Now to add them, we're gonna to have to multiply this here by S of X and this over here by Q of X. So we're gonna end up with P of X times S of X plus Q of X r of x divided by q of x s of x is a set of rational expressions close under addition yes yes since q of x uh, since q that looks like an a q of 
x and s of x are non-zero, are non-zero, then their product q of x is q of x s of x is non-zero. What this means is, uh, so, and then you got P of X, R, or S of X, P of X, that looks terrible. I'm going to bring it down on the second line so I make it look prettier. P of X, S of X, plus Q of X. It's almost looking 9 in Q of X. R of X divided by Q of X R S of X is again a rational expression. Subtract. Well, if we subtract, again, we're going to have to multiply this side by S of X and this side by Q of X. And we're going to get uh, P of X, S of X, minus Q of X, R of X, over P, or Q, Q of X, S of X. That's what we'll get. Is a set of rational expressions? Yes. For the same reason as, as in C. So yes, C, C above. Okay, and it can instead of plus there, that'd be minus. Multiply the rational expressions. So that would be P of X, R of X, P of X, R of X over Q of X, S of X. Is a set of rational expressions close under multiplication? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, remember, Q of X and S of X are non-zero. So, let's see, since Q of X and S of X are non-zero, then this will be be another rational expression. Divide the rational expression. Okay, well, we're going to invert and multiply. So you have P of X, S of X, divided by... Q of X, R of X. Is a set of rational expressions closed under division? Yes. Why? Well, Q of X and R of X are non-zero. They're non-zero. So that will be another, another, Rational expression. Good. Good. Are rational expressions like most, most like whole numbers, integers, or rational numbers? Well, uh, 
in that table we showed you that they were more like rational numbers. So they're more like they are more like rational numbers. More like rational numbers. They're more like rational numbers. And and, and that's basically because they're closed under all they're closed under all four operations. Closed under all four basic operations. Multiply and dividing rational numbers. Well, I'll let you read that in A, and when you get back, we'll do B together. We'll do B together. The fuel efficiency of Tanika's car at highway speeds is 35 miles per gallon. The expression 48E minus 216 divided by E times E minus 6 represents the total gas consumed in gallons when Tamika drives 36 miles on a highway and 12 miles in a town to get to her relative's house. In the expression, E represents the fuel efficiency in miles per gallon of Tamika's car at highway speeds. Use the expression to find the average rate of gas consumed on her trip. Well, the total distance, or the yeah, the total distance driven is uh, what do you got? Uh, let's see, twelve miles and thirty-six. That would be forty-eight. The total distance driven is forty-eight. Forty-eight miles. Find an expression for the average rate of gas consumed, g, on Tanika's trip. Gas or g equals total gas consumed divided by the total distance driven travel. So uh, the total gas consumed, they gave you this, the total distance that's 48 divided by 48. So 48E minus 216 divided by, and then uh, if you invert multiply, that would be one over 48. So we 48 times E, that's 48E times E minus six. The value of E is 35, okay? Uh, okay, solve for G by substituting the value of E. I'm gonna show you how we got that 35. All right, so 48, and then let's put, we put the 35 in there. Okay, and then we got 35 times 30, Five minus six. Uh, let's see, forty-eight times thirty-five minus two hundred sixteen. That gives you one thousand four hundred sixty-four. And then forty-eight times thirty-five times and thirty-five. That would be twenty-nine. Will give you forty-eight thousand seven hundred and twenty. So approximately zero point zero three. The average rate of gas consumed on Tanika's trip is about 0 0.03 gallons per mile. 0 0.03 gallons per mile. Your turn. The distance traveled by a car undergoing constant acceleration A for a time T is given by D equals V at uh, the volume dt plus one half at squared, where v sub zero is the initial velocity of the car. Two cars are side by side with the same initial velocity. One car accelerates and the other car does not. Write an expression for the ratio of the distance traveled by the accelerating car to the distance traveled by the non-accelerating car. So we're gonna call, let's see here, uh, make it, uh, let's see here. Uh, we're gonna call A is the accelerating car and N equals the non-accelerating car, okay? 
So uh, D of A would be, and it gave you this equation up there, V sub zero T plus one half A T squared. And D of N would be V sub zero T plus one half. And this car is accelerating, this car is not. So that's going to be zero T squared. Well, what happens when you put that zero in there? It's going to get rid of all of that. And it's going to leave you with V sub zero of T. That's all you got. So the distance of the accelerating car and the, uh, let's see, write an expression for the ratio of the distance traveled by the accelerating car and the distance traveled. So uh, that's going to be uh, D of A divided by D of N, which is V T plus one half A T squared over V of V O T. Now we're going to split that up. V O T over V O T plus one half A T squared over V O T. Now these two here, they cancel out and become one. So this equals one plus and then, uh, I don't like that one up there, so uh, the one half up there. So we'll put the two down here, V O T, and that just leaves uh, A T, uh, A T squared, to A T squared. Well, we've got a couple of T's, so we can get, let's get rid of this T and make that a one. So that becomes V O, and that just becomes T. That just a t so there it goes the rate as a function of time elaborate explain how finding excluded values when dividing one rational expression by another is different from multiplying two rational expressions well the only difference is uh, when dividing when dividing when dividing when dividing, uh, you want to uh, you want to multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, you want to multiply by the reciprocal. So, uh, so after that, they're the exact same thing. How is dividing rational expressions related to multiplying? How is dividing rational expressions related to multiplying uh, rational expression? Okay, explain how finding the excluded values when dividing one mixture by another is different from multiplying. Okay, again, I said it wasn't. It, well, there's another step. You want to uh, you want to first find the reciprocal of what of the divisor and then multiply. So, uh, how is dividing rational expressions related to multiplying rational expressions? Uh, pretty much the same thing. First, you want to find the reciprocal, and and then do the multiplication. Oh, good. Lesson's over. Folks, you have a good night. We'll see you in school tomorrow.